you're watching Gears. Hey, welcome to Gears and the Big Show, because everything we're working on today is really big, namely Sergeant Rock and Heavy Metal. Now, both of these vehicles are getting really close to completion, but before we blow them all apart and do the final paint and detail on them, there's still a few things we need to do to them. And that's what we're going to look at today. All right, one of the biggest issues that you're going to face with a custom vehicle are headers and exhaust, because very few things are going to bolt on and work right. For example, we got an Indy cylinder head 605 in this thing that fits in this engine compartment just barely. So to put any kind of a real header on this thing, they're going to have to exit out through the fender well, go down the running board, and up into the stack. And when it comes to custom headers and exhaust, there's one company that sits at the top of the heap. Stainless Works. So we ship this beast off to them to see what they could do with it. Stainless Works specializes in stainless steel exhaust components. They've got CNC machines that cut out all their flanges, and all of their tubing is mandrel bent for superior flow. Their headers and mufflers are TIG welded for superior quality and looks. The first thing they did was start mocking up the headers. And these are going to use two and a quarter primary tubes that will need to be tucked out of the way and still look good. Once everything was mocked up, the final fabrication began. Once the headers were done, the next step was a muffler. And Stainless Works decided to custom build a muffler that will fit right into the vertical stacks on the bed. And here's what it looks like all done. The headers lay right in place and exit out of the engine bay under the fender, kind of like a gasser. The exhaust pipe sits up nice and tight under the truck so it's out of the way. And the stacks bolt right back in place with the mufflers hidden inside of them for a very cool setup. OK, the next thing we're going to take a look at is brakes, because we've got to have a way to stop this beast, especially once we get these big old meats on there. Now, we've got four wheel discs on the axles, but we're going to actuate them with this HydroBoost assembly that we got from Power Brake Service. Now, as you can see, the HydroBoost looks a little different than your typical brake booster, because instead of using vacuum to power your brakes, it uses hydraulic pressure from your power steering pump, which is much stronger, much more reliable. Now, as you can see, the HydroBoost is also a little longer than your typical brake booster. So the challenge to you is to make it fit your project. Okay, the first thing that you want to do is set the Hydro Boost and the pedal assembly in place on the frame rail and position them how you want them. Now, you're not just looking for clearance under the floor, but also back around the master cylinder and up here at the pedal. There we go. Next, we'll build some brackets out of quarter inch steel so we have a solid way to mount the unit to the frame rails. Finally, we'll just bolt it on. And that's it. It's all in place, ready to go. All we need to do is run our plumbing to it. But before we do that, we need to talk about steering. Because we get a lot of questions about four-wheel hydraulic steering. How does it work and how do you set it up? So this is how we're setting up this rig. Both axles are steered by a special two-way ram that we got from the NOAC company. Now these are designed specifically for hydraulic steer applications and provide about 10,000 pounds of pressure in both directions. So they'll turn whatever tire you want to put on. Since the rear steer will only be used from time to time, it'll operate off of its own electric pump that's mounted under the seat, and it'll be controlled by a rear steer switch in the cab. The front steering needs more than that, so it's going to be powered off the power steering pump on the engine, and that's going to run through this thing called a Charlin valve, which also came from the NOAC company. Now this basically acts as a steering box. It sends fluid to the proper port, so when you turn to the right, the truck goes to the right, left to the left. Now, one of the main reasons that people want to use hydraulic steering is that number one is incredibly strong, and it completely does away with the steering box, tie rod, drag links, all that mess. So 
basically your steering linkage is a couple of hoses. It's a very clean setup. That also means that you can mount the Charlin valve in a little different location. So we're going to put ours in the cab under the dash like they do on tractors and heavy equipment. But before we can do that, we got to lay out a steering column and it's got to be short. Come on. This is a new steering column from I Did It called their old school hot rod column. Now check this thing out. You can see the housing is very thin. It's only inch and a half in diameter. It's polished stainless steel and there's no wiring, no tilt, no turn signals and only a flange for a three bolt wheel. That's why they call it the old school column. But the cool thing about this is it is designed for you to cut it down to whatever length that you need it to be. And I did it also has a whole bunch of pivoting column drops so you can dial in the drop of the column, which is pretty important when you don't have a tilt option. Also, they got a whole bunch of floor mounts and if you just have to have an operating horn, they also have a kit to do that too. So all you really need to do is start cutting and fit. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we are walking you through some of the issues that you're going to face when you are building a custom vehicle. Things like brakes and steering and exhaust. These are things that can sneak up on you and stall your project or kill it completely if you haven't planned for them. So it's important that you think these things out way back before you start the project. So when you start putting it together the last time, it all goes together like a big puzzle. Now we got the brakes, exhaust and steering done on Sergeant Rock. Now we're going to move over to heavy metal and take care of some issues over there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's no doubt I was pretty lucky when I found this truck. <laughs> Steady as she goes. Because even though it was wasting away in a junkyard, waiting to be crushed. Keep going. It didn't have a whole lot of rust on it. Just a few areas here and there that needed to be fixed. However, one area that wasn't in too good a shape were the seats. Look at this. Not only were they a strange 60-40 configuration. <laughs> That's some pretty nasty stuff there, man. But they were also old, brittle, and full of rat poop. That is. Hey, Mark, what you smell that? Tell me what that is. Oh, man. <laughs> now, obviously, we need a cool seat in here to match what we're doing on this truck. Something that's a combination of vintage and modern and retro and hot rod all rolled into one nice little package. And the only place that you're going to find a seat like that is at the Handmade Seat Company. Check it out. The Handmade Seat Company is the brainchild of ace metal worker Jamie Jordan. And they specialize in vintage looking bomber style seats, but with a distinctly modern twist. The thing was, when I started building seats, a lot of people would ask for more elaborate, more elaborate designs on their seats. And me being me, I mean, saying no wasn't really an option because I'd lose money and I couldn't afford to lose money. So I would just agree to it and then I would try to do it. The way I figured it was, you know, you paid me at the end, so if you like what I did, you just pay me at the end. If not, I'll just redo it. The seats are constructed entirely from scratch out of aluminum with aircraft style rivets holding them together so they have a traditional look about them. But the thing that really sets them apart is the incredible bead roller work that Jamie lays on the seats. When a guy comes to me and wants seats, the first thing I do is I tell him, I gotta figure out what it's going in. You know, is it gonna be the right thing for your project? A lot of people in theory think it is, but it might not be. But we try to figure out if it's the right project for, you know, the right seat for your project. Then it's measurements. I usually ask three questions when it comes to measuring. The width, the length, and the height. Then after that, I ask you what kind of angle you need on it, and I let you measure those. And I give, well, after you give me those measurements, then we start designing what it is that you want for your project, whether that be square corners, round corners, rounded edges, you know. And then we kind of look at what you want artistically. What will work with your vehicle? You'll find quilt patterns and diamonds and pleats and all kinds of fine details and lines that make these some of the most unique seats available today. Now, Jamie will build to your specifications, so when we told him we wanted a bench seat that still had the feel of the original 60-40 split, that's exactly what he built. And because of this, no two seats are alike, but each one is definitely a work of art. And that brings up another thing that Jamie makes at the Handmade Seat Company, original works of art. 
all pressed permanently into a piece of aluminum using nothing but a bead roller. You're not going to believe this. I do a lot of custom art. That's probably, you know, probably 40% of my business is, is doing custom art for people and, you know, just taking the bead roller and trying to figure out ways to do things or bring things to life. Every single line, every bump, every bulge that you're seeing in this metal is done with the bead roller. And if you think that's cool, wait till you see what it looks like hanging in your shop or in your house. Even your wife is going to like this stuff. And for those of you that would like to roll some of these beads yourself, Jamie has a special signature series bead roller that you can get right from him or Mittler Brothers. And it comes with special dies, heavy duty electric motor, and all kinds of other cool features that will allow you to take your bead roll into the next level. So after getting their machine, I, I used their machine and then I kind of found ways, even with a great machine like that, to improve upon it for with what I do. So after that, I came up with a few different ideas, took them to Mike Mittler, asked him if he'd be interested in making a signature series line for me, and by the grace of God he was, and you know, and here I am. Hey, we're back, and dealing with the seat issue, or lack of seat, in Project Heavy Metal. Now, we've already shown you the cool aluminum bomber style seat that we got from the Handmade Seat Company, but it's not much of a seat if you can't sit in it. And with this big aluminum ring all the way around it, it's going to tear you up if you try to sit in it like this. Now, we need some upholstery on this thing, but who can upholster something like this without messing up this cool vibe we got going? Well, I got a name for you. The Recovery Room Interiors. They can do a seat like this. Take a look. Recovery Room Interiors is a full-service upholstery shop that specializes in custom interiors for cars and trucks. In business for 23 years, the Recovery Room has built some of the nicest interiors around and has won virtually every award imaginable, from the Riddler to America's Most Beautiful Roadster to the Concours d'Elegance. Starting with a cool, distressed leather material, they stitched in a matching diamond shape to match the metal seat. A frame was fabricated to fit the contour of the floor, and just the right amount of padding was added to give the proper height and a comfortable ride. The back cushion was constructed the same way, with a frame carefully following the contours of the seat and stitching that matches the bead roll work on the metal. Now, you've got to admit, that is an awesome looking seat, and it's gonna be really cool in that truck, but it's not just gonna bolt right in. And there are some tips that you need to know when you're gonna mount a custom seat into a really odd vehicle. Now, Quick Tip, brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. Now, when you're going to fit a custom seat, obviously you've done some preliminary measurements, so you know the seat's gonna fit in the area. Now, how do you fit it in the area? Well, first off, you've gotta have the steering wheel in place, or at least one mocked up, so you can match the seat around it. Then, of course, you wanna center the seat up side to side and front to back. Now, you also need to take into account if you're using any kind of seat risers or seat adjusters and where your seat belts are gonna be. Also, you need to be looking to see what kind of problems you've got on the floor that you might have to cut out. Also, don't forget you gotta have room for your pedals, you gotta have room for your shifter, and you have to have access to all the controls. Another thing to consider is the height of the seat, because ideally you wanna be looking through the center of the windshield, not up at the top, not down through the steering wheel. Now, once you've got it all dialed in, then you can build your mounting brackets and mount your seats. Now, if you take the time to do all this, take all this stuff into consideration, you'll get your seat mounted perfectly every time. If you'd like to learn more tips to make your life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. Now, as you can see, that seat looks great in a hot rod tow truck. It matches the heavy metal personality perfectly. And speaking of which, we've got one more thing that we're gonna put on this truck that Igniter Armageddon tube amp. Now that's 120 watts of screaming tube amp that's gonna be awesome to plug into at the end of the day and jam out with some of our friends. Now, as you probably know, Igniter makes some of the nicest amplifiers on the market for whatever type of music you play.
So it's going to be really cool to incorporate that into the truck, build some speakers into the body, and so we not only have a classic hot rod tow truck, but also a rolling amplifier, <laughs> a really big one. And now, Parts Bin. When Chevrolet came out with the new Camaro, it was a breath of fresh air for GM fans. And the new body style had just enough retro overtones to give you the feel of a 69 Camaro, but with a modern twist. The one thing that Chevy did overlook, however, was the look of the 69 Rally Sport Camaro with its hidden headlights and grille. Well, Ligenfelter has decided to do something about that and came out with a rally sport style front end for the new Camaros. Now, this bolts right in place of your stock nose piece and gives you a rally sport style grille, a lower valence panel, and those all important electric hidden headlights that everybody's so nuts about. But there's more to it than that. You also have a crash bar to make it safe, a wiring harness to make it work, and all the lights and the chrome and the trim to make it cool right down to a real metal bumper and stainless trim. If you've got a new Camaro and you want it to look different than all the other ones out there, a Ligenfelter Rally Sport nose is the way to go. Speaking of the Camaro, if you've got one, you probably want to get more power out of it. And the best way to do that is with a supercharger. Well, ATI Pro Charger has got a new supercharger kit for the Camaro that you've got to see to believe. Look at this. It's got all the wiring harnesses and the fuel injectors and the tubing, everything you're going to need to make it work. You have an air-to-air -air intercooler and all the bracketry that you've come to expect from ATI. But what you haven't seen is this new i1 programmable centrifugal supercharger. This thing has a variable transmission built right into it to allow you to program in the amount and the type of power that you want making it possible to add as much as 190 horsepower to the rear tires using only seven and a half pounds of boost. The touchscreen display also makes it possible to change the power level with just the touch of a button, giving you incredible control over your supercharger right from the driver's seat. The next evolution of the supercharger is here and waiting to be bolted into your Camaro, but only if you call ProCharger. One of the most important finishes that you're going to put on your project is not just the exterior paint. It's an undercoat or a bed liner because those are areas that get a lot of wear and tear and you need a lot of rust prevention. Well, one of the best products out there comes from Magnet Paints and it's called the Monster Liner. Now check this out. This is a two-part catalyzed paint, so it's very thick, very strong, and it prevents rust. And all you have to do is just roll it onto the body or the bed or the undercarriage of your project. Now, as you can see, this stuff is incredibly flexible, so it's not going to crack, not going to let moisture get under there and cause rust, and it's available in all kinds of different colors. So you can literally match it to your project. If you don't have the time or the money for a spray in bed liner, the Monster Liner Kit from Magnet Paints will give you the look and the protection that you're after for a lot less money. And now, what are you working on? Brought to you by Spiderweb Modular Storage Solutions. Today's What Are You Working On comes from a young lady named Jocelyn Cote from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. And her project is unique because her dad found her a 68 Volkswagen Beetle that had been in a barn for longer than Jocelyn had been alive, and they decided to restore this thing. Now take a look at it. Now the car may look rough, but it didn't have any rust on it, so it was a perfect project. And since this is Jocelyn's first project, they decided to start slow with a good cleanup. Then they put on a new fuel pump and filters, plugs, wires, points, condenser, and completely redid the wiring, which was really hacked up. Now, Jocelyn's dad's been helping her out, but she insists on doing most of the work herself because she wants to learn how to do it. 
And she admits that she was kind of nervous about doing body work at first until her dad told her there's nothing you can do to this car that can't be fixed. As you can see, she's been hammering out dents and smoothing things down and loving every minute of it. Of course, having a couple dogs as companions is always a good thing, too. Now, the project is not finished yet, but Jocelyn's got big plans for it. She says she wants to put in a bigger engine with dual carbs, put on a modest two-inch drop, and do a disc brake conversion. And she says she's determined to get this thing finished, so she has something to run to the parts store in the junkyard with. I mean, that's actually what she wrote, man. Is this girl great or what? Now, Jocelyn, we can tell by your pictures that your garage is kind of tight could probably use some more storage space. So we are going to set you up with a whole bunch of shelving from Spiderweb Storage Solutions so you have all kinds of room to store your parts, your tools, your dog food, whatever you want to put on there so you get it up and organized and out of the way. Also, we're going to give you a Gears fender cover to protect that vehicle when it's all finished. Also, we're going to give you a project build book so you can keep track of what you did on that project once it's finished. And we're going to give you a year's subscription to Four Wheeler Magazine, so perhaps they can persuade you to turn that beetle into a Baja bug. Uh -huh, just something to think about. Now, the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this, you got to send your project into What Are You Working On? We will do our best to get it on the air. Also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter and Facebook. We've always got some cool stuff happening there, too. All right, that takes care of it for today. I'm sure Jocelyn's heading out the door to work on her beetle, which means it's time for you to get out there and find a project and build something with your own two hands. It's good for what ails you. We'll see you next time.